today we are at the Ringling Museum in Sarasota, Florida. It's behind us here. I have no idea what it consists of or what we do. Do you, have any, do you know anything about it? No prior knowledge. No prior knowledge, but we're about to find out. Let's go check it out. Just for reference, this is all the parking here. They have a theater and then across the road, welcome to the Ringling Museum. So here's a little bit about the House of John. So the home of John and Mabel Ringling was completed in the mid 20s. Getting ready to walk through this little archway and visit the inside. So here's what the like ticket center area looks like. And then over here we have the museum store, which we will go in and see as well. And then is that the Ringling Grill Room? We don't know what we're talking about right now. So come oh, and my, along. And my parents come are with us. They're up there getting tickets. They give you wristbands when you buy your tickets here. And it looked like uh, if you just want to go to the museum, it's $25. But if you want to go to the museum in the house, it was $35. And these are the two wristbands showing that you can go to both. So something pretty cool is you can do um, an estate map with a QR code. Or they gave us a map right here. And if you look, we start here. The red uh, little wristband means we can go into the museum the museum then we'll walk on down to the estate which is the purple and then we'll hit up the art museum over here and then finish at the museum gift shop so they actually said up front it's better to walk all the way to the back first do the estate and then come back and work your way back to the main building so we're gonna hold off on these museums until we do the estate first look at how interesting this tree is laying on the ground that is really cool back here they have the wandering chef food truck that's cool i like how they have plenty of options for food and then the banyan cafe and then further back here through these trees they have a little playground massive slide um and then look at look at this little garden area with these sculptures so that was actually the rose garden and had a thousand rose plants just a little area here they could come walk around look at that and then just behind these trees we're about ready to see the huge massive estate look at these banyan trees just blocking the sun it almost feels like you're in the jungle. Here's the map of where we are. So Caretaker's Cottage, which is private because they may still, it looks like someone's still in there, is right there. And then number four, which is the Secret Garden plus the Ringling Burial Site. All right, so this way is where they're gonna be buried. But again, straight in front of us, look at this place. Look at the view behind it. It's huge. I think you only get to tour the first floor but at least we get to go in it. Is this like the pool? Or fountain? Or fountain? I don't know, there's, there's some signage up here. What does it say? The pool. reflecting oh. pool. I guess you could lay in there if you wanted, but that's very peaceful and nice. Look how fancy this place is, look at that. Wow, very cool, look at the view. And then self-guiding visitor tour begins here. Getting ready to head into the estate here. Pretty cool stuff. So photos and videos are allowed, but no flash. Wow. And you scan this for the audio guide. Look at the view. Wow. That is amazing. So we have our AirPods in. We're setting up the audio tour. And then here's what we see right when we go inside. This is also a winter estate.
reception room. Look at these columns. Look at the ceilings in here, those beams and the columns. Look at this door, it's like the front door. Grand entrance. John Ringling in front of the mansion and that means House of John. So we, we're listening to the audio tour now and we can follow along on the phone. And if you don't have AirPods or any set of headphones, they allow you to just listen to it on your phone. This is so cool, because this is like the original stuff that was in here. And here you go, you can see, so, go to the foyer, the dining room, the court, the breakfast room. I can't see what that is, but you can scan any of these codes. So the next room is the dining room. Dining room. Look at the ceiling in here. Wow. Look at that table. This is actually molded plaster, not hand carved wood, they just said. And also, look at this fireplace. This table has a total number of 20 leaves that you can add to accommodate a very large party. Out from the dining room is the tap room, and this is what it looks like. And then right next to the tap room, there's a safe. You can scan that QR code and get the map. So we went through the dining room to the tap room. We're gonna walk all the way over to the ballroom, the court, the breakfast room, ballet room, pantry, kitchen, staff, I can't. Staff quarters. Quarters and, and terrace. terrace. Here was the dining. Now we're heading through this way to the ballroom. Look at this. Whoa, it's an elevator. Or you could take the nice, nice, nice grand staircase. And then this is actually not the ballroom, this is the court. We have to go through the court to get to the ballroom. But look how massive. Oh, and they got an organ. They have an organ. Very cool. I would love to go upstairs, but they have it blocked off. So just for reference, that's where we came in. So we went all the way around. Now we're going through this way, going to the other side of the great courtroom and then to the ballroom, which here is the ballroom. So you can see by the ceiling, they've got people dancing. This is the East Ballroom. Mabel Ringling's most cherished possessions purchased at auction from some of the New York City's most notable families. All furniture would be removed to make one continuous dance floor into the West Ballroom. Again, that ceiling is just so cool. So cool. Hey, do the Argentine tango they just mentioned. The Argentine tango. That was good. That was good. West ballroom. So this is the ballroom, but this side's considered the west. That's considered the east. They would remove all the furniture and make it one huge ballroom. Even look at the doors. Wow. Now we're going back to the court. We're starting to figure this out now. Look at the view. There's someone getting pictures out there too. That's pretty cool. But the court is just this massive room that looks so awesome. You can kind of get a peek upstairs. 
But again, look at the ceiling. It's just, I can't get enough of the ceiling. And piano there, fireplace. Again, there's the organ. What's it say? What's it say about the organ? John Ringling purchased the organ in 1924 at a cost of $25,000. The organ can be played manually or by paper organ rolls like a player piano. The organ pipe chamber and echo chamber are located on the second story mezzanine level and house. 2,280 pipes, as you can see, it's gonna run all the way up there. That is insane. I can't get enough of this room. Now through these doors, we have another table, which is the breakfast room. So I'm just gonna eat my breakfast in here with this huge table. Look how big that is. Look at the design. Look at the light switch. Now we're gonna walk from the breakfast room into like the pantry. So look at some of their fine china and wow. Their utensils. citrus peelers and the asparagus tongs. That's hilarious. Wow. The pantry. Mm -hmm. Look at those. And then there was the dining and there's the tap room that we went to earlier. That's the refrigerator. And then you're right here with this. What is this? Is that his? Water excursion. Oh, this was their yacht. Here's their bell system so they could see who needed some service. So from the pantry is the kitchen. And look at their stoves. A waffle maker, Vulcan brand. And then over here, we've got some more of the refrigerator stuff. And then more storage, look at that. Little milkshake maker. And then this is where we exit out. It shows some of the rooms. Bedrooms. Bedroom. Bathroom. Bedroom. And then here's another staircase. And another little bell system. And then we head right outside to this amazing view. Wow. The best sunsets ever. You would see that. Yeah, that's true. That is amazing. Look at some of the houses that wouldn't have been there that are here now as neighbors. Look at the stairs up there. You could go up there almost as like a lookout tower. The sunset would be something out here. Nothing to obstruct your view and facing west. Guy knew what he was doing when he had this place built. And then here's another view. We're down the stairs here. They would have had a massive boat parked out here. And then look at the stairs going up right
right to those doors. And then here is the estate from this side. What's cool is they also had a little path you could walk around. And now we're heading back towards the museum and also walking by where I guess they're buried. Here's another angle of the estate. There's that little pool we walked by earlier. Over here is like another garden. Let's see, there's a, oh, the secret garden where they are buried. Let's see what the sign says, the secret garden. The signage says the secret garden is this area. And at the back of the garden is the burial site of John Mabel and John's sister, Ida. So we're gonna go back there. Just a view of the secret garden. And towards the back, we should be able to see those burial sites. Look at all that, that is impressive. Over here, they've got agave. And then through these gates, it's where they are buried. Ida, John, and Mabel. And then walking back toward the museum, got some more trees that are just amazing. And another view of the estate. Yeah, that might be the best view of it. And now we're back to the caretaker's house, the estate over there. And we're gonna work our way back to the museums. Now the first museum we're gonna go in is the Historic Circus Galleries. Right away we're greeted with very, very, very old items. 1890, 1948. So here's some images, 1753, and you can see this is what the inside looks like. Both sides have stuff, and then we go back and get to look at more. Unicycle, circa 1950. Oh, how would you ride that thing? Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Here's a circus banner from 1900. That's in really good shape. Wow. This is insane. Socks belonging to Barnum and boots belonging to Tom Thumb. Look how small they are. Look at those socks. is a light bulb from the set of The Greatest Show on Earth in 1951. Hello. And then just some more items. There's another circus banner on this side. And this water bucket belonged to, what is it? The Flying Trapeze Performer. Here's orchestral band organ. That would be fun to play. This is really cool because it's set up like a circus tent. Now we're gonna head on to the next room. This picture shows their little ticket office. Let's get a closer look in the ticket office. The ticket wagon, 1911. And then another view. Oh, they've got a little sink. <laughs> cool ceiling. And then the other side. Here are some ticket boxes. Look, ticket stubs from 1956. and Barnum and Bailey Combined Circus, Madison Square Garden, 1929. They had quite the crew. I'm super excited for this. This is like all of their big stuff, their props. 
Look at the wood carving. Ringling Museum, Circus Galleries. The railroad car. There's some old photos. Roll top trunk belonging to John and Mabel, 1910. This just looks like Is that a little organ player thing in there? Oh, wow, they've got... What we'll do is we're gonna go through the train and then come back this way. Okay, we're up here at the train and you don't get to physically walk through it, but you can take a peek in all the windows. So we're gonna start here. Can't go in there, but can't really see much either. And then we're gonna work this way. It's like a little kitchen area. Here's another little, just a little guest room. Ooh, here's a place that you could sleep. That looks nice and cozy. And here's the bath and the toilet. Not much room in there. And then this looks like bunk beds with a toilet back there. Another little area you can sit down at. And then the back or front, I don't know which way is which, but... Now we're heading down to look at the little, I don't know what you call them, the little carts, the circus carts. Look at all those fun colors. Now, from what I can see, I don't really see that they have any of these labeled. So I'm not sure what they used them all for, but I'm just gonna do a quick walkthrough of this area. Not sure, oh, that's where you shoot the person out of the little cannon. And you can see back there. And then right through these doors is the other um, like gallery. Here are some conjoined twins. And it says, when one bent over, the other was lifted off the ground and they could not, not walk side by side. And then here's a picture of the Siamese twins. They had little to no freedom under their managers and were often forced to perform while sick. Wow, that's so sad. And then this is a parasite twin, which said could not speak or open his eyes, but did have some independent traits and feelings. All of these pictures show like the unique people that were part of the circus, whether forced or whether joined on their own. So this lady stood at age 23, six foot six and weighed 350 pounds. And over here we have the bearded lady. From my understanding, this next museum should be it was the one that said like the big show should be a mini scale of what the circus would have looked like attending. So here's the big show main entrance. They're gonna have it set up, I think, like it would be going into one of their um, circus shows. Right away we're greeted with this huge painting of Ringling Bros and Barnum and Bailey Circus. Looks like there's a gallery back there or something. May all your days be circus days. I guess we're gonna go take a peek, see what the gallery is. Oh, so it's just like a little intro video in here. So it looks like so far there's some, some more items 
about the circus. So you gotta put your mindset back into, you know, the early 1900s. You're seeing all these posters of all these unique things. That's how they made their money. I mean, you see elephants, you see these people doing these amazing tricks. You're gonna wanna go see it. So this is crazy. The clever language of the circus advertising, like I just mentioned a little bit ago, probably drew people to go to the circus. I mean, the biggest and grandest amusement alliance the world has ever known. And then some more advertisements. So through this room is the Howard Bros Circus and it shows the setup and how they got ready for a circus in a town. So we're gonna go through there and check it out. This must be like the trains they would use in order to trap. You can see both sides show little models of, I guess, all the train stuff they used. I mean, both sides of trains. Oh, okay. So the little carts we saw in the last museum, they would put them on these platforms and load them up and then pull them by train. So, I mean... It took some major em employment workers to manpower to, I mean, have a circus show. So now it shows they're going to be moving everything from the trains to the circus lot. You can see horses were pulling those carts. They've got more train, cookhouse supplies. This is what they went through in a day. So they had to have a big setup here for food, the cookhouse. 1,300 workers and performers three times a day is what they had to cook for. And look at all of their tents. Now, make note, there's the dining tent. 3,900 meals daily, good grief. So this, which one was that, right here? That looks like the ring stock tent, which only, known as the pad room, and it only um, had horses that performed in the big top. Rest tents. So this is, I guess, essentially where they slept. You have spec performers, you can see right there. Performers entrance. Yeah. Kind of making a grand entrance. I mean, that's a huge tent. Life in the backyard. But someone got hurt there. Then they had their private tents. And there's thousand people here. Performers dressing tent. Whoa, the lights just dimmed. Is it time for the show? The sea elephant. Goliath. circus day so people pulling in getting ready for the circus and now playing one day only they probably did that just for advertising purposes because <laughs> i can't imagine setting all this up for one day you see the police department that was the little um it looks like the little um organ cart we saw earlier you can still kind of see the overview so there's the big show We've got all this other stuff. Concessions. So it is worth it to go to the other museum first because these were the little posters we saw hanging up in the back. 
Oh, lights are coming back on. Back to being daytime again. There's like the ticket office. Cotton candy. The main entrance. The entrance and you head towards the big show. So this... So they're walking through seeing the animals that are there. And then once they would exit that area, they would head over to the big show circus tent. <laughs> He's about to tip over because of his avocados. Animal food prep tent. So is that the, uh, what is that? It almost looks like a restroom area. Is it? Oh, oh. Restroom. restroom and then you can see the middle of it as well and now we're getting ready to enter the big top you can see the stats on that 26,000 yards of canvas so the big top acts what's crazy is it took Two and a half hours without intermission and included more than 800 artists performing in 22 displays. Oh, they're doing some stuff. See him passing out some cotton candy. Yeah. And then the other side of it, it could fit 15,000 people. Then over here you have dog kennels. Oh, it's turning the lights down again. Got the horses in there. This is the blacksmith tent. And it, you probably can't see on the video, but I mean, this is massive. Like, I can't imagine this being seeing it in real life. And now we're heading back to how they originally brought all the circus to the area. And then we're back at the beginning where all the train, all the trains were at. Then through this area, there's more of the um, carts in here, as well as advertisements. Stilt walker costume. Wow. Horse blanket. Bandwagon, where the band's gonna be playing. So here's another um, pipe wagon, and they're called calliopes. So we saw a smaller one in the other museum, and here's just a larger one. And if we look inside, you can see there's all the pipes. Now we just read that when they said um, shows were one day, it wasn't just advertisement. Most of them were actually just one day. So they came into the town, did it for one day, and then packed up and left. And then this part of the museum just shows more, um, more of their circus items. So we're just going to walk around and see what all we can find. So some items they have over here. Look at the bat, the Band-Aid box. That's huge. Giant roller skates. That's hilarious. They have a little theater room where you can watch jugglers. The show begins in one minute. Looks like we're gonna sit down and see what the show consists of. Oh, that's bright. So that video showed facts about the circus, different props they use and just pretty cool facts. So it's, it's worth it to watch. You can hear the circus music-ish style in the background more costumes shoot the cannon so look it's like when they fire out of the it's like the cannon oh people oh my gosh yeah like the, i remember the first time i ever saw that and i was like i can't believe they just did that look whoa <laughs> shoot the cannon we're gonna give the cannon a test see if we can land it in the in the little netting there Right, you can give it a shot. Let's see. What's it say? Select a button to choose how much force you want to use. Let's use 
Let's use maximum force. Reset. Step one, insert a foam. Step two, select a button. Try to hit start. <laughs> oh, <that was> sweet. <laughs> nice. Nice work. So you can see just, there's a ride the ring. So there's just so much to show in here, but you can get an overview of it. They just got little cool things along the way, different items and pieces and um, stories. Oh, bounty, there you go. <laughs> he rode it. <laughs> he rode the horse. Let's see what the view is from someone riding the back of a horse. So if I was wearing like a helmet cam, this is what you'd look like, riding the back of a horse. Oh. And it's moving. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Whoa. They've got a little baby elephant riding in a car. They've got some costumes. <laughs> riding on that. Scary looking tiger. And some more costumes. Ringmaster costumes. Walk the wire, whoa, all right, we got another fun and fun one here. We gotta walk the wire. Walk the wire and you gotta hit the button. Is she gonna make it, folks? She has no netting underneath her. <gasps> <laughs> Done. Look at that, all right, we're gonna see. We're gonna see this point of view. See if we've got this. Can't really put my hands out and hold the camera. Okay, I did hit the button. That was insane. Look at the Walenda family. This is wow. This is okay. Who's who shirts this? Oh, here. Gift of Carl Walenda. Carl Walenda crossing. That right there. So you can actually come over here and, hey, look, Nick Walenda. And then right here, it's crazy because you can actually go around and listen to the ringmasters. But there's a little clown car. Here she goes. She's getting in the little clown car. <gasps> and she... Now we're gonna head towards the art museum and then the museum gift shop. So it looks like the art gallery is over there. So we're gonna head up the gift shop first and then finish at the art gallery. So here's a peek of what the gift shop looks like. Oh, and there's Starbucks up top. Museum store, Circus ABC. And then they have some t-shirts got some books 
They've got some more shirts over here, a puzzle, little bear, or little elephant, t-shirts, hats, waters, and then, oh, look at all the fun stuff back here. Posters, puzzle. The puzzle is 500 pieces. We've got an ornament. We're gonna head upstairs towards the cafe. They've got a little sitting area and then just kind of a cafe with coffees, teas, hot drinks, and some snacks. Now we're heading to the art museum and you can see it's a pretty shaded scenic walk as well. Getting ready to cross this bridge, but check out in the water all the soft shelled turtles. There's the there's the big one over there in the water. And here's in front of the art museum. Check out the entrance. So they have some more QR code guides that you can use. Look how large these paintings are. Wow. These are massive. this room holy smokes this place is holy smokes i'm not gonna be able to film every room because it's just way too big so these are all like john ringling's collections paintings what is it like little sculptures and if you read these you can see they were all his and then he gave them to the museum so it's crazy to think he literally owned all of these pieces of art and where would you store art this big but literally his name's almost on all of them in fact his name is probably on every single thing in here so he just had a bunch of look at this look at the date on that this one we have jesus at the garden of gethsemane painted in 1500s and of course owned by John Ringling and another room full of art large large pieces of art holy smokes wow insane so we did find one thing that these chest of drawers was a gift by someone very very old another room and another room and another room after you exit that wing which look at look at all Dear goodness, there's a huge, I'm guessing that's David? I feel like that's probably David. I don't know, we'll check, but there's more that way. This place is massive. This is insane. Look at the view there though. Let's see if we can find a name of this one. We just confirmed that it is David. Look at all of the statues around the top. Need to make note that on the audio tour, they just informed us that all of these are still Ringling's collection. They are all of his. That is unreal to me. And you can see at night, the lights shine up on David.
on this wing. So we just came from this side. Down here is another little art gallery. Over here is an art gallery. And over here is an art gallery. And there's where he came in, those doors up there. So we are gonna go, this is the door we just came out of, of the art gallery. We're gonna go down and see what this one is. We're not sure what art gallery is down here. So this side is actually closed. Hmm. But you get a close up, look at that. Look how beautiful this is. So here is a gallery there. We're gonna go this way and see what gallery is up here. So we just stepped into another art museum. <laughs> it's got all John Ringling all over it. Wow. Crazy. So you can see it goes that way. It goes this way. And it's all of his artwork. Wow. This is something. Just a big room for whatever. Eighteen seventy six grand piano. So these rooms were in the Astor Mansion and it was the salon and library. And he bought these rooms just to have them. Wow. Good grief. Look at all the woodwork. Wow. Look how big this is. And it was 1886. Notice the fireplaces in each of the rooms. So this kind of explains what Ringling did, this paragraph right here. When mansions were being destroyed, he would go purchase a lot of the interior features and then put them here in the museum. And now, where those homes were, is where the five ships were <laughs> That's crazy. And now it brings us back to the front. So we asked some questions inside. This museum, John Ringling built just a year or so after his estate was finished. So what you're seeing behind us and what you saw in the museum, they didn't build and then like try to recreate, recreate it. John Ringling actually had it built to store all of his statues, all of his art. So the building itself is from like 1927. So he probably just invited friends over and was like, hey, let's go check out my art museum. And that's where he stored everything. So a lot of the, everything you're seeing up, everything you're seeing up here, all original. Pretty cool. And this is what it looks like on the outside. Just how old it is is unbelievable. And just like that, we're going to exit through the archway that we just entered several hours ago. And just like that, finally finished for the day here at the Ringling Museum in Sarasota. I was kind of... Well, we didn't know what to expect coming into it. I just had the circus in mind, but the fact that it had the home and then the art gallery as well, that it was really cool. Yeah. I really enjoyed it was unbelievable. We could spend hours and hours and hours here. We did spend several hours here, but if you ever come out, definitely go to the art museum, check out all the other museums and go into his estate. It was all totally worth it. I mean, we can sit here and talk about it all day. Oh yeah. It was great. It was I really, really enjoyed it. So with that being said, that does it for today. Thanks for watching.